All right, looks like we're ready to get started. Let me go ahead and bring this up. Um, welcome back to CSE 142. I screwed up one thing this morning. There's a lot to remember, and I forgot to open the link to the results for our loaded, latest question of the day. So I'm going to kind of leave that as the question of the day. One more, one more lecture. Uh, we'll see the results on Wednesday, and then we'll switch to a new question of the day. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, so today we're going to be uh, moving into material that you'll be using for your homework three. So I want to talk about that, and uh, I'm going to do a fair amount in the interactions pane. So we may as well go ahead and get started uh, by being in the interactions pane. So uh, I wanted to mention that uh, my co-author and I, Marty Stepp, decided that a nice way of practicing the use of parameters, uh, what we're doing with methods, uh, is to incorporate graphics. Uh, the graphics uh, can be fun, you know, uh, not everyone finds it fun, but we think that uh, a lot of students do find it fairly motivating. So uh, we decided that's what we would do for our third homework. Not every instructor agrees with us. You know, some people don't like to do graphics, you know, so they, so we decided to, to be a little less controversial, that we decided we would have a chapter called 3G. It's the, it's the graphics part of chapter three. So you'll see the book is kind of divided into this funny thing where there's a chapter three that has material and then there's a 3G that comes next. So today we're moving into material from 3G, that graphics supplement that's not a required part of the book, yeah, but we like to do it. And um, in general, we're moving into a different style of programming that I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about. So we've been doing what's known as procedural style programming. Uh, it's an old style programming. It's kind of what people did originally when they programmed. You could think of it as being action oriented or command oriented. So, you know, in a procedural style program, you tend to say things like, do this, draw this, print this. You know, they're all commands. They're all verbs. They're all actions. Uh, and we've been doing that by writing static methods. So this was a decision that uh, Marty and I have made that we wanted to have you practice procedural programming early. Uh, but Java wasn't really designed for procedural programming, or maybe it's better to say that Java was designed for more than just that. Uh, Java is considered an object-oriented language. Uh, and so uh, basically Java, the intent was that more often you're gonna be working with objects than defining these static methods that are the procedural style of programming. What many of us found when we first started teaching Java is that it just wasn't easy to teach object-oriented programming to novices uh, using Java. You know, there's, a, uh, there's some debate in the computer science education community. Maybe there are other object-oriented languages that would be easier to understand. But, you know, an awful lot of people have kind of come around to the idea that uh, maybe object-oriented programming, uh, well, particularly in Java, is not the thing to be teaching to novices. That's one of the reasons why some people have switched to Python is because they tend to program Python in a more procedural way. Uh, what Marty and I kind of prefer to do is that we're going to do the object-oriented stuff. We're not going to leave this course without teaching you about objects, but we're going to do the object stuff later. Uh, so uh, we're going to keep writing programs with static methods, keep doing procedural style programming. But what we're going to do is we're going to practice using objects. So that's kind of one of the differences, is that we're going to want to start using objects. Uh, uh, and then later in the course, when we get to chapter 8, uh, we'll uh, show you how to define your own objects, how to have your own uh, uh, classes of objects. So um, chapter 2 talked about the idea of what are known as primitive types. This is kind of simple data. This is old style also. This is things like int and double. There, there's some other ones that we're going to see, something called care and boolean and even some others beyond that. Uh, we don't need to worry about those just yet. We'll get to those later. But you can recognize the primitive types in Java because they all begin with a lowercase letter. So the names of the primitive types are all things that begin with a lowercase letter. So that's, chapter two talked about that. And that's not object oriented. That's the old style way of doing things. That's the kind of thing that we did in the procedural style languages. So uh, in Java, uh, what we have are also object types. And uh, one of the things that you know about objects is that they are all defined by a class. 
Uh, so, and what have we said about kind of the names of classes? We've said that they begin with a capital letter. So for example, string, which we saw last time, that we had a parameter of type string. We had a variable of type string with a capital S. So that's a, an object type in Java. Strings are objects. So that's kind of the first example we've had of some objects. And you can see that for what we're gonna do with the graphics, we're gonna have a lot more. Uh, so that's kind of just the beginning. All right, uh, well, so let's go ahead and start looking at some of this material. Let me mention that in Java, it isn't easy to do simple graphics programming. You know, in some languages it is, uh, but Java kind of, you have to know a fair amount to do even very simple drawing tasks in Java, uh, which is inconvenient. So my co-author and I decided that we were gonna do something here that we don't normally do, which is that we're gonna create a custom class. So this is something that we wrote that's not part of Java. This is not standard Java. This is something that, that we wrote uh, for, for our teaching purposes. We wrote something called Drawing Panel. So that's the name of a class, Drawing Panel, uh, and uh, uh, it's ours. It's not, uh, you won't find documentation for it uh, in the Java documentation. Uh, it's, uh, it's our own uh, thing. This also means that in order to use our Drawing Panel, you're gonna have to copy it to your computer. So you're gonna see, I, I've all, there's gonna be more that I put up for the calendar for today, but I've already, uh, for the calendar for today, uh, included a link to drawingpanel.java. So you're gonna want to open up this drawingpanel.java and save it to the directory where you're gonna be writing programs. So as long as you have it in the same directory as your program, like say for your solution to homework three, Java will find it. But you are gonna need to do that. It's a custom thing. It's not gonna be available to you otherwise unless you copy that to your computer so that you have it available to you. All right, uh, I've already done that on my computer. So let's go ahead and do the following. Um, let me say that, uh, uh, so you know, we've seen things like saying int x equals three, you know, introducing a, a, a variable called x you know, which is of type int and setting it to a value. Well, when we're dealing with objects, we do similar kind of things. I showed you that you could have string s, you know, equals Zora, I think that I did last time. So that's again a name of a variable with a type. Here the type is an object type, but it's otherwise it's not that different. Um, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna make something called a drawing panel. So it, that's its type, that's the name of the class and that's its type, and I need a variable name. I could use any variable name I want. I could call it X, I could call it S, I could call it P, you know. Uh, I'm gonna call it panel, because uh, that's, you know, it's a reasonable name for something that's gonna be a drawing panel. So I want a variable called panel, of type drawing panel, which I'm gonna be set equal to something. Another thing that we're gonna see that's, uh, that's different than what we've done before is that often with objects, we have to make a call on something called new. Notice I typed the word new and that's been turned into purple by JGrasp. So I have to actually construct a drawing panel. I'm calling a constructor. So I'm gonna say I want a new drawing panel uh, and then uh, we'll talk about what kind of goes in parentheses. So this is a common kind of form that, that, uh, that we often will use. It's setting up a variable uh, of a certain type and on the right hand side we're constructing something. It turns out that when you make a drawing panel that you have to tell Java its dimensions. So it's a two-dimensional drawing object. You have to tell it its dimensions. And there's a convention that Java follows very consistently. We've tried to follow it in the book as well, which is that it gives you the horizontal information first and then the vertical information. So it's kind of the X information first and then the Y information. So in this case, I'm gonna say I want something 400 wide and 200 tall. So width first and then height. So I'm giving it the dimensions of the drawing panel. Those are pixels on my screen, little you know, uh, picture elements. And when, you, when I give this command, you're gonna see a little thing pop up here. This little drawing panel object pops up here. Now let me see, I think I did this before lecture in such a way that I'll be able to do this. I tried to find a setting where I could kind of be looking at uh, the drawing panel uh, and, and uh, looking at the, 
uh, up here at the same time. So they're kind of both on the screen at once. So there's my little drawing panel, uh, and this is my interactions pane up here where I'm going to manipulate it. So let me talk a little bit about what's stored in this variable. What does panel actually store? Now, in the case of a primitive type like x, it's storing the actual value 3. So that's, that's a simple mechanism. It just stores a 3. That's not true for these object types. Uh, the model that was uh, suggested by the people who popularized object-oriented programming back in the 1970s is they kind of said, think of it as, you know, uh, uh, objects conversing with each other. So that's kind of the way that they like to think about it. Uh, and so what is it that this variable stores? It stores a reference to an object. That's a technical term we use, a, a reference. We'll talk more about the, the idea of a reference. You could just think of it as contact information, as kind of keeping track of how to get a hold of the panel object so that I could converse with it. So the people that popularized this had the idea that think of your desktop as having a lot of different objects on it, and the different objects talk to each other. So if I want to talk to the drawing panel, I say, hey, panel, and I use a dot notation as a way of uh, kind of placing a phone call, you could think of it, or something like that, that there are various kinds of commands that I can give here uh, to this drawing panel. So one of those commands, for example, is something called set background. So I could tell the drawing panel to set its background, and uh, uh, I can give it a color. So I can say color.cyan. Color, you'll notice, has a capital C. That's the name of a class. This is in all uppercase letters, which means it's a constant. So in the color class, there's a constant known as cyan. And so I can tell the panel to set its background to color.cyan, and I get a warning from JGrass. JGrass says, this isn't going to work. Do you want me to do something to help you? I'm actually going to say, no, JGrass, don't help me out. I'm, I'm OK with seeing the error message. It's letting me know that it doesn't know about the class called color. So that's kind of unknown to it. Uh, that's because I didn't do uh, something that I need to do, something known as an import. So as we start exploring different parts of Java and its libraries, we'll find that sometimes we need to say, I want to access that library over there. And in this case, there's a library known as AWT. And so uh, uh, I believe the, the, people, uh, the, the people who originally marketed this called this the abstract windowing toolkit, the AWT. I think the author of it called it, he wanted to call it yacht, yet another windowing toolkit, a bit of a joke. But in any event, uh, abstract windowing toolkit, AWT. I'm going to say import java.awt.star, and that just says make these things uh, available to me so that I can access the things within that library. And then I'm going to use my up arrow key to go back to that command that failed before, and I'm going to hit enter, and this time it worked. So notice that it changed the background uh, to be cyan. So that's one of the things that we can do with a drawing panel, is that we can ask it to set its background. Um, there aren't very many things we're going to ask you to do with a drawing panel. Uh, instead, what we're going to be doing is working with a different object that's known as a graphics object. And so you can say to the panel, get me the contact information for your graphics object. So that's, a, that's another command I can give to the panel. Tell me about your graphics object. And the interesting thing here is that we're not going to call new. So this is, you know, this is uh, almost like uh, contradicting what I talked about here with the new. You know, objects do need to be constructed. But in this case, the panel constructed the graphics object. So every panel, when you construct it, will call new and create a graphics object for itself. And here I'm just kind of saying to it, tell me how to get in touch with your graphics object. Um, turns out you can actually just hit enter here in JGrasp, and it'll give us information about what's, what comes back from that call on get graphics. And it shows me that it's a sun.java2d.sungraphics2d object. It's showing me its font setting, its color setting, you know, some information about that graphics object. But what I actually want to do is I want to execute some commands with that graphics object. Um, in the slides for today, 
Marty has a convenient slide that shows you the major graphics commands that we're going to want you to know. So these are commands uh, of the graphics object. You don't have to memorize this. I mean, well, there's no tests anyway. But we would always assume that you have available to you a table like this that reminds you of the different methods, what their names are, what the parameters are, uh, the conventions for what those parameters mean. So this is a kind of a slide that would always be available to you uh, when you're doing the things that we're going to do here. Well, let's look at this first command. You can tell a graphics object to draw a line and you give it two xy coordinates. All right, we gotta talk about coordinates before we start doing this. So let me come back over here. So uh, one of the things I need to mention is about how the coordinate system works in graphics. So uh, normally we're used to the lower left corner being zero, zero, but in graphics, it's the upper left corner that's considered zero, zero. So uh, it, it is true that x coordinates increase as you go to the right, the way we would in a normal Cartesian coordinate system. But in a graphic system, this convention used by all of the different graphics packages, the y coordinate goes up as you move down. Some of you may have noticed something that's going on over here, which is that this drawing panel object is actually showing us a little information here. It's showing us what the x coordinate and the y coordinate are. Uh, as we move around on this, uh, 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 in the drawing panel here. And it's showing us information about the, the color uh, for that particular pixel that we're positioned on uh, right there. So uh, this is, uh, these are kind of extra features that my co-author Marty Stepp built into the, uh, the drawing panel, is that it lets you do that. So as I kind of get closer and closer to that upper left corner, you see the X and the Y are kind of approaching that zero, zero. And if I come down a little bit, that's an x-coordinate of 5. If I move straight to the right, you know, way over here, you can see uh, that my x-coordinate now is almost 400. Uh, my y-coordinate is still a very low number, like an 8. Uh, if I were back over here and, I, and it watch as I move down, 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 look at how the y-coordinate is approaching that 200. Remember, I had a 200 height, you know, for, uh, for this particular panel. So the draw line command, you give it an x1, y coordinate, uh, x1, y1 for the first point, and an x2, y2 coordinate for a second point. So suppose that I want to draw a line here. Let's do that. Let me bring back jgrasp. And how about if I say, to, I want panel.getGraphics. I need to have kind of a reference to the, uh, be able to talk to the graphics object. And I'm going to tell it to draw a line. Uh, how about if we draw a line from an x-coordinate of 30 and a y-coordinate of 40, so that's kind of over 30 and down 40, and let's draw the line to an x-coordinate of 310 and a y-coordinate of, say, 80. You know, so that's going to be an x-coordinate a lot further to the right and a y-coordinate somewhat down. So I'm going to give that command. I'm, I'm giving a draw line command. I'm telling the graphics object to draw a line on the, on the panel. And it did that. OK, uh, suppose that I want to draw a little box. I mean, maybe I'll draw a box, say, over here. Uh, take a look again, and you'll see there is a command called draw rect that lets me draw a rectangle. And I give it the x, y coordinates of the upper left corner, and I give it a width and a height. So let me bring these two up. Um, how about if I tell the panel that I want to draw a rectangle and let's say give it an x coordinate of over by 50 and let's give it a y coordinate where it's somewhat down from here. Let's give it say um, 100, that's halfway down, right? Uh, that's, kind of, that's kind of the coordinates of the upper left corner. How big do we want it to be? How about 40 wide and 30 tall? So that would be a command to draw a rectangle. I tell the panel to draw a rectangle, and what happens? Error. I did that on purpose. You know, uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, if I have actual students in the room, they'll, they'll be pointing it out and raising their hand and saying they knew that this wasn't going to work. So one of the things that gets somewhat confusing with object-oriented programming is you have to remember there's a lot of different objects, and you've got to talk to the right object. So I've told you about two kinds of objects so far. There's a drawing panel, 
that's a little bit like a canvas, you know. Uh, so there's a drawing panel, and then there's a graphics object. And the graphics object is the one that does all the drawing. The graphics object is like a paintbrush. You know, you dip the, the, the paintbrush in paint, and you paint onto the, the panel. You paint onto the canvas. So here, I was talking to the panel. The panel doesn't know how to draw a rectangle. Only the graphics object knows how to draw a rectangle. So I have to do the kind of thing that I had done before. I have to say to the panel, get me the reference to your graphics object. So uh, I start with the panel. I ask it how to get in touch with its graphics object. And then that gives me uh, contact information. You could think of it as a cell phone number or something. Contact information for how to talk to the graphics object. And then I tell that graphics object to draw a rectangle. So the difference between these two is here I was trying to talk to the panel, which didn't work. Here I'm talking to the graphics object, which is going to work. So let's go ahead and do that. And we draw a little rectangle here. Um, I think you can see that this is going to get tedious to say over and over again, panel.getgraphics.something, panel.getgraphics.something, panel.getgraphics.something. Well, you know, we have to over and over again go back to the panel and ask it, how do I get a hold of your graphics object? I mean, it would be almost like if I said to you, what's your mother's phone number? You know, what was your mother's phone number again? What was your mother's phone number again? I keep asking you, asking you, asking you. You'd kind of say, dude, write it down. I don't want to keep giving you this number over and over again. Well, we can use a variable to do that. So I'm going to have a variable of type graphics that I'm going to call G. So I'm using a very simple name for it. Graphics G, and I'm going to say to the panel, tell me how the contact information for your graphics object. Tell me how to get a hold of your graphics object, and I will save it in a variable called G of type graphics. So that's just kind of going to let me avoid saying panel.getgraphics over and over and over again. So now I can just say G dot. Uh, so that'll be much simpler. And that's the way we'll tend to write our programs. In fact, you can see my co-author Marty Stepp cheated a little bit by putting G dot in all of these entries in this table here. He was anticipating that you're going to introduce a variable G uh, that's of type graphics. So uh, these are going to be the typical commands that you'll give. All right, I want to do one more of these, and then we're going to start looking at an example. You'll notice that draw rect is a command that we have here for drawing the outline of a rectangle. But there's also something called fill rect that fills a rectangle. So there's kind of two versions of that, the, the, the one that draws just the outline versus the one that fills it uh, you know, completely. And then there's a similar pair for drawing an oval and filling an oval. And you know these are called oval and rectangle. If you want uh, circles and squares, you just give it widths and heights that are equal to each other. So the more general form is any old rectangle, you know, uh, any old oval, but you could obviously you know, give it uh, uh, parameters that would give you a square or a circle. So let me come over here. And I'm going to try another thing, too, is I'm going to use the set color command. It sets the graphics to paint any following shapes in the given color. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say g dot, oops, I want to be over here, g dot set color to be color dot, uh, say, how about if we make it red? So it's, a, it's like you dipped your paintbrush uh, in red paint. You know, so now the next time I draw, it's going to draw in red. Uh, so how about if we do a G dot fill oval? And how about if we go to, oh, how about 75 uh, as our X coordinate uh, and 80 as our Y coordinate? And how about if we draw a square that's 40 by 40. So I'm going to draw a red square, 40 by 40, with these, this x, y coordinate as its upper left. So let's hit enter. Uh, oh, I did a fill oval. Sorry, I was meant to do a fill rectangle, but that's fine. We drew a red circle instead of drew, drawing a, a red rectangle. Um, if I position up here, you, you know, I can kind of get myself to where I'm very close to that 75x and the 80 you know, uh, I'm not quite there, that's pretty close. 
to the 7580. That's the coordinates again of the upper left corner. Now in the case of ovals and circles, we give it a bounding rectangle. So you always specify a rectangle, whether you're drawing a square or whether you're drawing a circle. You always give it a bound, you know, the rectangle, but obviously when you're doing uh, fill rect and draw rect, it's the entire rectangle. When you're doing oval versions of it, that's the, it draws the largest oval that can fit within that bounding rectangle that you've specified. Uh, in fact, let's, we can just go ahead and do this. I'm gonna say, I'm, I'm gonna change it back to what I'd wanted, which was the, the rectangle instead, and it draws the rectangle there. Um, one of the things I did wanna point out is, notice that part of my other square that I drew is gone, or that was a rectangle that I drew. So it had drawn an outline of a rectangle. Now this red square that I've drawn has painted over it. So it is a painting model. That's kind of an important thing to understand is that whatever, you know, if you paint something new, uh, it, it, it covers up whatever was there before. You paint over things that were there before. All right, normally I'd ask for questions and I probably get a few questions, but uh, that's not something that I can do. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and switch. So let me um, close this. Let me, um, return this to the, the full size. We'll do something a little bit different uh, uh, when we're gonna be doing our, uh, uh, our, our program that we're gonna write here. So, come on, uh, JCRAS, let me, let me close that. Just trying to get myself a little screen real estate there by closing that, uh, that upper uh, left panel there. So, um, suppose that I make a drawing panel, panel, which is a new drawing panel, uh, and we'll have it be 400 wide and 200 tall. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin with what we had before. We'll make a drawing panel uh, of, those, uh, uh, of that size. Let me go ahead and compile and run this little version. When you construct a drawing panel, it pops up on the screen. So there it is, our little drawing panel. I want us to work on a specific problem, uh, and uh, it lets me show you something that you're going to be using in your homework. Uh, we have the luxury this quarter with all the extra lectures that we're going to be able to do this in two different lectures. We're going to be able to do some examples here today and more on Wednesday to get you ready for that homework. So in the same way that there's an output comparison tool you know, for, that we use for programs one and two, there's an output comparison tool here as well. So I can compare something to a web file and there's various things that come up here. Uh, these are things that, I'm, that we're going to be using in the lecture. There's a lab uh, tomorrow that'll be uh, using these things. Not too late to sign up for the lab. If you're interested, go to the labs tab and sign up. Uh, and some section examples that are here. Uh, I want to use these lecture examples. So I want us to talk about this thing that's called CAR1. So an example from my co-author, Marty Stepp. And what it's telling me is that I'm off by 80,000 pixels. I don't know if you've thought about it, but 400 times 200 is 80,000. Every single pixel is wrong. Uh, and so this, uh, this uh, is a very nice little feature that Marty Step has built for us. You can kind of use this little arrow here to say, what was I supposed to do? What did I actually do? What was I supposed to do? What did I actually do? So you can just kind of go back and forth and back and forth between what was expected of us and what we actually delivered on. Or you could say, highlight the parts that are different. And when I highlight the parts that are different, it highlights everything. So we've done absolutely everything wrong here. So we want to kind of think about, well, what would be a way to get closer? I usually ask for suggestions. Usually people are smart enough to realize there's a whole lot of pixels that are just a background, you know, that uh, we've got the wrong background color here, that we use the default drawing panel background color, which is white. So maybe the first thing that we can do here is that we can come over here and we can tell our panel to set our background color to be color dot, that's known as light gray, oops, light. Uh, gray is the name of that color. Notice, remember I mentioned this, that constants are in all uppercase letters, and so we use the underscore if you have more than one line. Light gray is the color we want to use. If I hit compile, uh, some of you may have already anticipated, it can't find color, it's confused by that. 
well, that's because I forgot to do the import. In the interactions pane, I did the import just by kind of saying it in interactions pane. In your program, it has to appear outside of the class at the very beginning. So import java.awt.star. So this is gonna be a line of code that you're gonna include in all of your graphics programs. So in order to do the kind of thing I'm doing here, you have to do that. I didn't have to do any kind of an import for the drawing panel because as I said, that's this custom class that Marty Stepp and I wrote and uh, I copied it to the directory. So uh, the drawing panel is in the same directory as this file that I'm working on right here. So we can try compiling and running this version. We can say to this one, well, let's have you compare yourself to the web file car one. And now we're doing better in terms of pixels. And if we ask it to highlight the difference, you know, it's kind of showing us that only uh, the car uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, not done correctly. So uh, how are we gonna do that? We wanna kind of figure out how to draw that car. So there's several different things that we have to do to draw it properly. Um, and I made a file here called car.txt that has information about this car that we're trying to draw. So I'm kind of showing you that its upper left corner is uh, 10 in on the X coordinate, 30 down on the Y coordinate. I'm showing you that the entire car has a width of 100. It has a height of 50. Uh, and then I'm kind of showing you that the window has a width of 30 and that there's 10 pixels here, 20 pixels here. And these are not very, not very accurate circles, but you get the idea here, is that there's 10 pixels in where this begins and the full diameter of this circle, kind of from here to here, is 20 pixels. Uh, similar information there. So uh, if we kind of go back to our little car here and think about what it is uh, we're gonna do, what could we do uh, that would be uh, easier. Well, uh, you know that the pen starts out, the, you know, the drawing, uh, the graphics object, some of them call it the pen, you know, it starts out with a color of black, that's the default drawing color. So how about if we draw the body of the car first? So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna do a call on fill rect. Remember, you can always go back and remind yourself there's fill rect, you know, where we give it the coordinates of the upper left and we give it a width and a height. So I'm gonna to wanna to come over here and let's say that I want to do, uh, oh, uh, well, I wanna say g dot fill rect uh, and I wanna give it, you know, these four numbers, you know, to do the fill rectangle, but what about g? I haven't set up graphics G, so let's do that. Let's set up graphics G, uh, and the way you do that is you ask the panel, hey panel, how do I get a hold of your graphics object? Let me give the get graphics command with the panel object. Now I've got my G, so I can say G dot G dot G dot from now on. Okay, so the, uh, you remind yourself, you know, you can keep going back to it. The first two coordinates are the X, Y of the upper left corner the x, y of the upper left corner. Well, I've indicated it right here. The x, y of the upper left corner is 10, 30. So that's what we would provide first, is the coordinates 10, 30. And we'll be very clear uh, in the assignment write-up. We'll give you lots of very specific coordinates of things. We'll tell you where things are to be drawn. Although you'll see there is kind of some, you know, some coordinate math that needs to be done to figure out some of these things. But anyway, the upper left corner is in 1030. The overall width of this car is 100 pixels. The overall height is 50. And that's what came next. Remember, the fill rec had a width next and then a height. So this one has a width of 100 and a height of 50. So let's fill in those numbers over here. We'll fill in a width of 100 pixels and a height of 50 pixels. We'll end the old execution, recompile, uh, and run. And now we've got kind of a black box. We can compare to web file and see what it says about how we're doing. Uh, and if we highlight our differences, now you can see the differences are the window 
and the two wheels, you know, and this number is coming down, which is good. We're getting closer and closer to being right. The window and the two wheels. Yeah, and if I had students, I'd say, what do you want to draw next? I can tell you that usually what people end up picking is they usually pick the window. I think it's because they were, they're thinking, all right, I just drew run one rectangle. I can probably draw another rectangle. So what are we going to need to do? We're going to need to do another fill rect here. Uh, we're going to need to figure out what coordinates to use for that. So let's come over here and say g dot fill rect. And let's take a look at the notes that I have here. So the, f the first two things you give to the fill rect are the upper left corner. The coordinates are the upper left. Well, what's that? The coordinate here, the x coordinate here was 10. That's 10 over. The whole car, you know, is 100 wide. So the x coordinate of the right hand side of the car would be 110. And this little indication here is showing you that this has got a, you know, a width of 30. So it's back by 30. So 10 over and then a width of 100, it would be 110 over to here, back by 30 would give me an x coordinate of 80. I think that's right, but you know, you can always, you'll, you'll find out before too long. That's the nice thing about the comparison tool. What about the y coordinate? Well, now this thing uh, was down 30, you know, that was the, uh, the, uh, the upper left corner of the car itself was, had a y coordinate that was down 30. And then this is down 10 pixels, which would be uh, a y-coordinate of 40. Remember, it goes up as you go down. So that would be a y-coordinate of 40 for this line right here. And that's the coordinate we're looking for, because we're looking for the coordinate of that upper left corner. So I'm going to say that that would be a 40. So those are the, that's the coordinates of that upper left. That's what I think is true, is that it's got coordinates of 80, 40. By the way, let me just kind of mention so for your homework, I told you that you're not supposed to talk to other students about the homework. But some of these graphics ex examples get tricky enough that kind of doing all the coordinate math and everything, maybe some of this is going too fast for you. You can talk to your TA, you can uh, talk to other students if you wanted to, if you have friends in the class, about some of the coordinate uh, math that's going on for the example programs. Not for the homework, but for the example programs. And here, you know, this is 30 wide and 20 high, 30 wide and 20 high. So we can end our old one. Let's see if I've drawn the window correctly. So there I see a window drawn over a window. Hmm, nothing seems to have changed. Why would that be? Well, what did I do? I filled a rectangle, you know, that was for the body. And then what I did is I drew a little thing here, but I didn't change the color. So uh, that meant that I drew black on black. I drew a black rectangle on a black rectangle, and that's not going to work very well. So before this, I should say uh, g dot set color to be color dot cyan, because that's the color of that uh, window. Uh, by the way, I'm doing something here where I'm kind of introducing some blank lines here. Uh, I, I sometimes put notes to myself, and you can do this. You can put things in the middle of a method, like draw the body, you know, of the car. This is draw the window, you know, if you wanted to kind of remind yourself what you're doing at different points in time. Uh, we'll end the old version and compile and run. Okay, so now we've got a little cyan window there and we can compare to web file to see whether we did it right. And say, look at the highlighting the differences and it's showing us just the wheels. So it looks like we got those things right. So now we wanna draw those wheels. So what's that gonna involve? Uh, we can go ahead and end this one. So how are we going to uh, draw the wheels? Uh, well, first we're gonna set the color to be color.red. And then we're going to have two calls on fill oval because we want to draw two circles, two calls on fill oval. So, uh, you know, there's four numbers that we need here, you know, and you can kind of try to think to yourself, well, okay, hmm, what are, what are the four numbers that are here? Uh, 
One thing that's a little easier to think about is that this circle has a diameter of 20. So it's 20 pixels from here to here, 20 pixels from here to here. And remember, you know, what we're supposed to do is to think about the bounding rectangle. So we're supposed to think about th kind of this upper left corner of the rectangle that would contain this circle. But that rectangle is gonna have a width of 20 and a height of 20. So actually we kind of know that these numbers are gonna be 20, 20. You know, the width and the height are gonna be 20, 20. But what about these numbers? We gotta think about the X and the Y coordinate. Well, the car itself was over by 10 pixels, and then this is over another 10 pixels for this position right here. So that's gonna be an X coordinate of 20. That's the X coordinate here. 20. And then what would the y coordinate be? Well, y was 30 down from here. Remember that the car has a height of 50. So 80 would be the y coordinate of this line right here. But we want the upper left corner. That's kind of halfway through the circle, right? So what's the y coordinate here? It's halfway up, you know, the, 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 the y height there. So it's half of the 20 above that position. So it, you know, this again was 80, so this would be 10 above this, which I believe will give us a y coordinate of 70. So let's see whether we have a 70 here. Maybe I'll comment this out for a second and just kind of see whether uh, I've done that wheel correctly. Oops, I needed a semicolon at the end of the line. So we'll compile and run that. Got a little red wheel, we can compare to web file and see whether we got it right and ask it to highlight the differences and it's just the other wheel. So that's good. So it looks like we got that right. Uh, let's come back over here. We want to do the other call on g.fill oval. And so uh, again, four numbers, but some of them are easier than others. Uh, uh, this is a circle that's the same size as that one. So it's going to have a bounding rectangle that has the same dimensions, 20 by 20 for the bounding rectangle that gets us our diameter of 20 for the circle. And, you know, we're trying to figure out the coordinates here. Well, an interesting thing about this is that you'll notice it's at the exact same Y coordinate as the other one. So that one we already know. We know that the Y coordinate is 70. The tricky one here is the X coordinate. Well, it would be 10, you know, to get to the indentation for the car itself. It would be 110 to get to here, to the right-hand side. Back by 10 would get us to 100, and back by another 20 would get us 80. So that was a little fast there, but uh, I, I don't want us to run over time. So uh, again, I think that's right, but we'll find out soon enough. We'll do a compile and run and ask it to uh, compare to web file uh, the car one. And we now have zero pixels of difference, which is, so we've got it exactly right. That's what we're looking for. Zero pixels of difference, we're done. Um, I have, I think, just enough time to introduce the idea of kind of, oops, I, I wanted to be there in my uh, program. Uh, and I want to compare to a different web file. I want to compare to car two. So the idea of this one is that we want to draw two of these cars but in different locations. That's kind of the idea. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do here, you know, you'd be tempted to copy all of these lines of code and copy and paste and change things around, but I hope by now you know that we're not gonna to wanna to do that. We're gonna to wanna to make a method. So we're gonna to wanna to say something like draw car, uh, and we're gonna to wanna to call the draw car method twice. Uh, we'll think about uh, parameters in a minute. But so we want a public static void draw car, which will probably end up having some parameters to it. Uh, and so I just kind of put all of these lines of code in there. Well, what are we going to need? Uh, let's, actually, let's, uh, let me end this. And we get an interesting thing if we just compiling, co try compiling the way it is. And what it tells us is, oh, it, it doesn't like the dot, dot, dot. Let's do that. Let's get rid of it. Let's say no parameter passing. Let's just say all we did was move the lines of code uh, into there. What does it say? Well, it can't find G. And there's all sorts of places. G, 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 G. We're using G throughout this thing right here. 
Well, that's because main set up G, and so we're trying to use it in the method. We're trying, you know, we set it up over here, we're trying to use it over here, local variables, scope, we talked about that in the last lecture. So we need to get the information of this graphics G into this method over here, and that's exactly what parameters are for, is that we're gonna wanna do G. So we're gonna wanna pass graphics G. And we did that basically just to be able to have access to that graphics object G. Uh, if we compile now, it's gonna compile. The problem is that it's gonna draw the same car twice. So what we also wanna do here is we wanna be able to draw cars in different positions. That first car, remember, had an upper left corner of 10 comma 30. 10 comma 30 is what we had for that one. I can tell you that that other car has coordinates 150 comma 10. I wrote it on a piece of paper before class so that I'd remember. So we need to provide an integer x and an integer y that are the coordinates of the upper left corner. And this would be a great place to have a method. This method draws a car with upper left corner x, y using the given, gra oops, the given graphics object, uh, the given graphics object, you know, et cetera. So, you know, a description of what your method does and talking about the parameters is a very useful way of describing what a method does. So how do we incorporate the XY? Well, the XY were used here. That was just kind of the overall car had an X and a Y. Um, that was when we were doing the 1030 case. So all of these other numbers that we have here, let's think about the X that was a 10. This was an 80, so it's not a bad guess to guess that, well, that's 70 more than the 10. Uh, the 20 is 10 more than 10. 80, again, is 70 more than 10. So what if we just kind of did those as various X coordinates? And then our Y coordinate here was 30. Uh, this Y coordinate is a 40. So what if we did Y plus 10? This is 70. What if we did Y plus 30? This is 70. What if we do Y plus 30? Uh, so what if we kind of uh, uh, tried to adjust our X, Y in those ways? Let's try drawing our car. I blew it with the wheels. Now, what did I do with the, the wheels? The wheels had a Y coordinate of 70. Oh, I did that wrong. The Y coordinate had been 70. Here it had been a 30, and this was, uh, so this would be 40 more uh, to get a 70. Uh, and it was the same uh, Y coordinate. We had a, we wanted to get, oh, excuse me, I didn't want to change my uh, X coordinate here. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm screwing up here and I, I don't want, and I, I'm running out of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and open car2.java so I just have the right values here. So you know, I was screwing up. It's, it, it should be a lesson to you that anybody can screw up with his coordinate math, but I don't have enough time to kind of get it right. So let me just go ahead uh, and switch to this one. Uh, and if I compile it and ran it, uh, I'd be able to verify that it matches. So um, this is, uh, I, I'm sure some of this went a little too fast, so that's good that we had the luxury of being able to do a second example in the next lecture. Uh, well, maybe I'll just run and make sure that we're seeing our two different cars. So this was using parameters to be able to draw cars which have different XY locations, that have different kind of, of, of uh, places for, the, for, for where the car was gonna be drawn. But you could also imagine drawing cars of different sizes. And that's much harder, kind of the scaling math is a lot harder. Uh, it's in the slides for today. So there's a slide 20 uh, that kind of tells you, uh, here was this particular car, uh, and then the, we, we had kind of, we were drawing various cars. Uh, the challenge is to be able to draw cars of different sizes, that one's a smaller car, and then potentially use a little for loop that draws a bunch of these. So that's a challenge if you're interested. That's what we call car three. Uh, and so if you wanted a little challenge to give yourself, that would be a great thing to do between now and Wednesday. 
uh, if you're interested. I mean, if you're not interested, you know, the code is going to be posted on the web page. Uh, and uh, it's in the slides. You'll see the solution in the slides. And uh, the, don't worry too much about the scaling for the, for the car. The example I'm going to do on Wednesday is going to be much closer to the kind of thing you'll do in your homework assignment. So we're going to do uh, a careful example done slowly, not like this stuff that was rushed at the end here. Uh, and that'll be uh, the example to follow to get ready for your homework. So we'll do that next time. I'll see you then.